does aging gracefully actually mean? I mean, because it was thrown all up and through the comments in my last Botox and filler video, and I was like, wow, that's such a subjective term. I wonder what you guys think. So I took to my community board here on YouTube and got, you know, some varied responses. But the one that got the most thumbs up was this one, which reads, you know, I kind of got to get the phone to read the, the comment or whatever. When I think of aging gracefully, I think it's looking good no matter what age you are. So not trying to chase your previous youth, but embracing and styling the older you get. But in my last video, judging by a lot of the comments, a lot of people think that things like Botox and filler are not ways of aging gracefully. People seem to look at things like Botox and filler as cheating. Like a lot of people are like, why don't you just do diet and exercise? You're, you're being lazy or just use an eye cream, right? So I invited board certified dermatologist, Dr. Corey L. Hartman back on the channel to talk about ways in which we can maintain our skin that don't involve Botox and filler. So keep watching. The first question I wanted to ask you, because this is something that came up in comments. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a specific comment here where this person says, I agree, everybody wants a quick fix. Of course, he's going to defend the treatments. It's his livelihood. No one wants to do the hard work, exercise and eat healthy, not worth the risk for me. So a lot of comments insinuated that diet and exercise is the way to age gracefully, right? So the funny thing is for me, I recently lost 30 pounds and my face drooped. I don't think that I put out the message that, you know, eat McDonald's, sit on your behind and get Botox, but what role do diet and exercise play in with aging? Well, I wish that that person would go back, who made that comment, would go back and look at my Instagram because it's full of examples of healthy things that I incorporate into my own life. You see me on there doing hot yoga. I'm doing, um, I will bike in with my kids. I'm, I just posted, or my gym just posted me doing burpees over the bar. I mean, I wake up at five o'clock every morning and do CrossFit. I do hot yoga every week. I eat a sensible diet. It, it, it's not a substitute. It all, all goes together. And if you don't have a good skincare regimen, and you're not treating your body right from the inside out, I tell patients all the time, none of this is gonna be successful. In fact, I agree with the person and what they said, it's not a quick fix, it's an extra enhancement. So if you think that you're gonna get injectables or any of that without having a good skincare regimen and a good healthy lifestyle, then you're fooling yourself and those are patients that I turn away because it's not gonna work. So the foundation mm -hmm. has to be diet, exercise, a good skincare regimen, healthy, clean living. I'm talking physically, mentally, you know, emotionally. We want everything intact. We're trying to become fully actualized individuals, not just cartoon characters who, you know, plump up faces. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a mindset. What about some of these places like Face Gym where they do like these massages and these exercises and things like that? Does that work? <laughs> it does not work. Yeah, that's, okay. it's trendy. It's on TikTok. I think it's probably on Reddit at this point. But you have to be careful of some of the claims that are out there these days. There, you know, everybody with the platform doesn't necessarily have the credentials. Um, and so there are a lot of treatments out there that don't have studies to support their efficacy. I'll just put it that way. So I can't do 10 push-ups and fill the volume underneath my eyes. <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> okay. okay. So you've been, in a, you've been featured in a lot of articles in a lot of my favorite magazines. And one that, that stood out to me in particular was one where you were talking about where prevention is key to an anti-aging routine. And you talked about the holy trinity. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Absolutely, I love this topic. I, prevention, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's so much easier to stop a problem than to correct the problem once it's there. It's cheaper, it's less painful. So let's establish good habits from the beginning so that we can put off as much correction as we can down the line. And these days we have so many innovations that we know that if we can do things early on, we can impact our, our skin down the line. So my holy trinity, which is a nod to my New Orleans roots, is sunscreen with SPF, 
preferably between 30 and 50. We know that all skin types can benefit from that. And the protection that it gives us against not only sun damage and discoloration, but also sagging skin and loss of collagen. The second one is your antioxidants. That's kind of like your vitamins. I recommend those to be applied in the morning. There are a whole host of different vitamins that um, can contribute to healthy skin, vitamin C, vitamin E, ferulic acid. And I, I just posted some really good vitamin Cs. And I know that people said that they sometimes have irritation with those. It doesn't have to be vitamin C. I just want to put that out there. But some sort mm -hmm. of antioxidant in the morning stops the breakdown of collagen so your skin doesn't get all saggy and dull. And then the last one is retinol. And there's no more studied ingredient in all of skincare than retinol, retinols and retinoids. They help with cell turnover. They help to declog pores. They treat acne. Of course, that's the cornerstone of any acne regimen. But they help with discoloration, fine lines and wrinkles, collagen stimulation. They do a lot. So you can get 90% of your goals accomplished both now and prevention by using those three components. Your skincare regimen does not have to be super expensive and it does not have to be time consuming. Now, if that's self-care for you and you love a 30 minute regimen with 12 steps, hey, do it. But it doesn't have to be that way to get results. Kind of walk the audience through it. So in the morning, they would cleanse. You know, some people may be able to rinse their skin off with what there was a funny um, sure. meme going around about that, like how like, oh, that's gross. But people can actually just rinse their skin off with water in the morning if they did a good cleanse at night, if they have Absolutely. like really dry sensitive skin. But me, I do need a cleanser. So you do your cleanse, then you move on to your antioxidant serum, yes. and then you do your sunscreen. That's so it. That, so that's you find morning. one that okay. you like, that's your yes. morning. And then at night, cleanse your skin. I think it's a good idea to really cleanse your skin at night um, mm -hmm. with a cleanser that's geared toward whatever your skincare um, needs are. Then you either apply a moisturizer or your retinol. Now the moisturizer has a couple of different purposes. And if you mm -hmm. don't need a moisturizer, you can apply your retinol without it, then go for it. But it can help your skin to um, become more acclimated to your retinol more easily so that you get over that hump of the dryness and peeling that everybody hates, but it always ends. And it's just a means to an end. It gets you to the point that you start to see the improvement, but the moisturizer can help with that too. So, and I don't really care before or after the retinol, I, I, I like to say, put it on first because um, some of the retinoids that are prescription can actually absorb better into the skin when a moisturizer is applied, but whatever works for you, just find the combination and be consistent. And I've actually mm -hmm. had people who like to mix them in their hand and then apply mm -hmm. them, them together. Now, when I think of aging gracefully, I, and a lot of us, I do think one celeb that may come to mind is Angela Bassett, right? So she's always looked amazing. She's always had these amazing arms, her skin, just like her overall, like she's, that, that's a bad man pajama right there, right? Yes. yes. So I wanted to, I wanted to read a quote from a new beauty article that she was interviewed in a couple of years ago. She says, I'm pretty passionate about keeping up with the skincare, especially being in front of the camera and on the stage. It's important. When I'm not on stage or on camera, I'm pretty sans makeup. I think it's good to keep a clear, clean, fresh palette. I'm a potions and lotions girl. So if you make me promises, I'll give you a shot. I do really like the IS clinical serums. Um, I've always come back to come back around to them and they work really well for me. I also find good estheticians everywhere. And then I have my dermatologist, Dr. Pearl Grimes here in LA. Dr. Pearl Grimes has actually been on the channel the here too. Yes. She said, I know lashes are no surprise. Botox is no surprise. I'm a big supporter of being natural, but I've done it twice. Just a little bit, not too much. I still need to express myself. What else? I've tried old therapy too. I'm not bringing this up to shame anyone or convince people to get, you know, Botox or whatever, but I do think that people unfairly compare the aging process of, you know, celebrities with your average everyday person. Yeah, I think it's interesting that people are willing to give um, her a pass on that because um, I, I guess, you know, I'm in this industry and in this world. So to me, it's pretty obvious that she's also engaging in other treatments that are helping her to look so amazing and to preserve that because there's only so far that genetics can take you. And 
let's just be honest. I mean, at a certain point, all of us are going to start to see the effects of gravity and, and genetics and aging and the environment that we've put our body and our skin in for 40, 50, 60 years. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that she's open about it. I think it's interesting because whenever I post about how a celebrity is looking so amazing, the first thing people want to talk about is, well, they have money and they have access. And I mean, that's kind of like not the point really. So it's interesting that people give that grace to Angela Bassett when she has access as well. And they give her the yeah. benefit of the doubt that she doesn't do any treatments when she's admitting to us that she does. So another thing that I had asked you uh, previously, and you were kind of like, uh, yeah, that's still an injection. <laughs> so if people <laughs> want, to, <laughs> if people want to see a professional to get some treatments that don't involve Botox and filler to address some of the signs of aging that are typical in black people, the jowls, the drooping, what, what are some things that people can do? All right. So there are some really amazing energy based devices that are on the market now that are totally colorblind. Anything with radio frequency micro needling, and there are so many out there. I have two at my office that we thoroughly research that offer patients different experiences. One is more, is, is called profound, it's deeper, it's for people who've really had the changes develop already and they're doing more correction. And, and that one has downtime. The other one is called Genius. It is a procedure that doesn't really give a lot of downtime. It's a series of treatments, but it's for the younger patient who has a mind on more prevention, how it works. So we've known that radio frequency um, has been beneficial for a really long time, but the older devices that came out initially would just have a handpiece that put the heat on top of the skin and hope that it would get down to the dermis, the second level of skin where all the fun stuff happens um, and make an impact. Well, there's a limit to how hot you can deliver, how much energy and how much heat you can deliver without damaging the surface of the skin. So we took it one step further. Now we're delivering the heat more specifically and more directly to the fibroblasts and elastin producing uh, fibers in the dermis, but the only way to get it there and to be precise is to deliver it with needles. So it's still a needle. It's not a substance, you know, you're not injecting any kind of medicine or any sort of gel, but the energy still has to be directed. The point of all of this, I think that people need to realize is the surface of our skin is only a part of it. And a lot of the loss of elements that contribute to the sagging and the loss of definition and the loss of contour, that's deeper. So we have to get there some kind of way. And a needle delivery system just seems to be the most efficient way to get there. So there is a bit of a distinction because you're not injecting anything except energy and heat. But those devices can be, they can be a good alternative treatment for somebody who's not interested in traditional injectable therapies. All right, listen up y'all. It is me after my editor done already edited the video. And I was like, ooh, let me add this in here even though I feel like y'all should know. But if you don't know, now you know. You cannot be out here running all wild and free on the substances, if you know what I mean, if you are trying to age gracefully. One of the biggest things to age the skin outside of the sun, <laughs> the cigarette smoke, them substances, if you know what I mean, and even excessive alcohol drinking. So, you know act accordingly. Now to me, aging gracefully is such an annoying term because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you get Botox and filler, people gonna have a problem with that. If you age and you have sagging skin and wrinkles, people gonna have a problem with that. You know what the common denominator is? People. Yo, people. That is what age has taught me is that people are full of so you must do what makes you happy and bump them. When I was in my 20s, I thought I was gonna be washed and, 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 and old and, and you know, blah in my 40s. Meanwhile, here I am at 40 having the time of my life. The only thing that I personally want from my 20s is my good knees and my good lower back. But even that with, you know, I'm in physical therapy and I work out with a trainer, I might be, you know, on my way to getting that back. Thank you again to Dr. Corey L. Hartman for coming on the channel. He has two offices in Alabama, so I will link to his website so you can get more information. You can also follow him on social media. He's on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. And listen, that is the place that you go 
for the dermatology but you stayed for the shade. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you have the Holy Trinity in your skincare routine? Would you consider adding it into your routine? Let me know all about that. Follow me on social. The links will be in the description box and I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.